What's bacon fam? It's your boy Shinka Muffin here, and welcome to my in-depth Scotism guide. Welcome back everyone to another video. If you're familiar with who I am, then you know that this is the section for table of contents. Up on the screen, you will see timestamps, as well as there will be some in the description, in order for you to skip to a section that you wish to watch. Skotazo is a black slash greater demon demiboss who is located in the catacombs of Koren. He is a level 321 monster who always drops an ancient shard, hard clue scroll, and ashes. His main attack styles are mage and melee. He has 450 hit points and has a max hit of 38 respectively. There are 5 main reasons as to why someone would want to kill Skotazo. The first being his guaranteed hard clue scroll drop. This allows for players to earn even more money from this boss. The second reason being is his guaranteed ancient shard drop, which is used to recharge your arc light. Third being consistent out drops as well as high amount of common high tier items used for other skills. One such example are onyx bolt tips, which come in a quantity of 40, rune outs as stated before, which is dropped in threes. And our last example are mahogany planks, which are dropped at a quantity of 150. The fourth reason as to why someone would want to kill Skotazo is because of his rare drops. There is an uncut onyx, which has a drop rate of 1 out of 1000, and a jar of darkness, which is 1 out of 2500. The last reason as to why someone would want to kill Skotazo is because of his pet drop and dark claws drop. His pet drop is a miniature version of himself, and the dark claws allow you to recolor your slayer helm to appear purple. Now that we have the general overview of Skotazo, let's discuss the requirements. The only requirement that someone needs to kill a Skotazo is to have a Dark Totem. Dark Totems are obtained by combining a Dark Totem top, middle, and bottom together. All monsters except for Ghost drop these pieces in the Catacombs. The drop rates for these pieces depends on the combat level of the monster you're attacking. The higher the combat level, the more common it is for a drop to occur. In addition, slaying any superior slayer monsters that spawn within the catacombs has a guaranteed totem piece drop. Now that the requirements are out of the way, let's move on to the recommendations. My first recommendation I have is to have the Arc Light. The Arc Light is a weapon that specializes in slaying demons. Since Skotazo counts as a greater demon and black demon, the effects of the Slayer Helm will stack with the Arc Light. The second recommendation I have is to have 80 plus stats in attack, strength, and defense. This allows you to have access to all weapons in the game, as well as providing additional offensive stats when slaying Skotazo. In addition to this, I recommend 70 plus prayer, which gives you access to Piety. With Piety active with these kills, it makes your kills so much quicker and easier. The third recommendation is to be on a slayer task of either Greater Demons or Black Demons. Not only will your kills be quick, you'll gain massive amounts of Slayer XP just from one kill. One kill is equal to 618 Slayer experience. The last recommendation that I have is to complete all of Zaya's favor. With all of Zaya's favor completed, the Xerax Talisman will be able to teleport you right next to the entrance to the catacombs. This allows for easier travel when going to the catacombs entrance. Now that the recommendations are out of the way, let's continue onwards with gear setup. Given of how Skotazo attacks with both melee and mage, we're going to run with a hybrid setup. This allows to tank some damage while outputting as much as you can on him. First and foremost, you can range Skotazo. It is only effective if you have a twisted bow though. If you do not have this, then melee is your best bet in order to fight him. Also, if you wish to use melee void, go for it. I can't tell you what to do. For your helm slot, run with a slayer helm or black mask if you're on task. Otherwise, go with a helm of Nata's knot, justiciar face guard, or Varax helm. For your necklace slot, go with an amulet of torture, amulet of fury, or amulet of glory. For your cape slot, roll with an infernal cape, a fire cape, ardoin cloak 4, hp skill cape, or arty cloak 3. For your torso slot, run with a Carol's leather top, Bando's chest plate, Fighter's torso, or Black Dehyde top. For your leg slot, go with Bando's tassets, Obsidian plate legs, Carol's leather skirt, or Black Dehyde chaps. 
For your weapon, go with an Arc Light, Scythe of Vider, Razi Rapier, Abyssal Tentacle, or Abyssal Whip. For your gloves, go with Barrow's Gloves, Rune Gloves, Regen Bracelet, or Combat Bracelet. The first choice of boots are Primordials, then Dragon Boots, Rune Boots, Guardian Boots, and finally Climbing Boots. All rings I'm about to suggest are imbued. Your first choice is a Berserker Ring, then Ring of Suffering, Warrior Ring, and finally Ring of the Gods. For your shield slot, go with an Avernic Defender, Dragon Defender, Dragonfire Shield, or Rune Defender. Finally, for your spec weapon, go with a Dragon Warhammer, Arc Light, Bandos, God Sword, Dragon Claws, or Dragon Dagger. Now that the gear setup is complete, let's move on to the inventory setup. For your inventory, go with one Super Combat Potion, your Special Attack Weapon, three prayer potions, a stamina potion, an emergency teleport out, your dark totem, a way to teleport to the catacombs, and finally, the rest of your inventory with the sharks or better food. Now that inventory is completed, let's learn on how to get there. The easiest way to get to the catacombs is to rub your Xerax talisman and choose Xerax Heart. You'll teleport right next to the catacombs entrance, you'll investigate the statue, and you'll be at the entrance to the altar of where Skotazo resides. Keep in mind though, in order for you to unlock this teleport, all Zaya favor must be completed. The next form of teleportation is using your normal spellbook with the Teleport to Karen spell. It requires 2 Law Runes, 2 Soul Runes, 4 Water Runes, and 5 Fire Runes. In addition to this, you will also need to find the book located in the Arceus Library of Transportation Incantations. If you use Runelight, there's actually a plugin already for this in order to find it, and once you teleport to Korend, you will teleport right in front of the statue that leads you to the Catacombs of Korend. The other teleport methods are via Fairy Rings. I'm not entirely sure which Fairy Ring is faster. The first Fairy Ring is the code CIS. This teleports you north of the Archaeus Library. Once you teleport to this ring, you run south through the library and eventually you'll stumble upon the Catacombs entrance of the giant statue. For the second Fairy Ring, the code is DJR. Once you teleport there, run east, eventually you will come across the walls to where the statue entrance is. Really, the only other way that I know to get here is to use the Port Serum ship in order to arrive on Zaya and just run all the way there. Honestly guys, your best bet is to use the Fairy Rings or Xerax Talisman. Now that we're here at the entrance, let's learn the fight mechanics of Skotazo. A super important disclaimer before we use our totem on the Dark Altar. The Skotazo fight is in an instance, that means that if you die in the instance, all items that are dropped will be lost, so take precaution before you enter his lair. Before entering his lair, set up your quick prayers. You'll want to set protect from item, piety, and protect from melee. You're going to want to have these prayers up for the entire duration of the fight. Before entering, drink a dose of your super combat potion and equip your spec weapon. Once you enter the lair, activate your prayers and spec out the boss. Switch to your main attack weapon and watch your prayer and food. Eventually, Skotazo will activate these altars that are located north, south, east, and west. There is a UI that shows which altars are active. They glow purple and they have like a moon type shape to them on that UI. These altars have 100 HP each and greatly increase the defense of Skotazo while being activated. It is essential that you take these down as quickly as you can. Your arc light will one hit KO them. All other weapons will require the full 100 damage on the altars. Try to have no more than two of them activated at once. When traveling to these altars, switch to protect from mage prayer since you will be out of Skotazo's melee range. Once all altars are destroyed, attack Skotazo again until he activates the altars once more. At half HP, Skotazo will spawn either miniature versions of himself or a dark Anku. Ignore them since you'll have protect from melee active. Once Skotazo is dead, everything will despawn and your loot will be on the floor. Congratulations on your Skotazo kill. For those that are confused, here's a full fight shown unedited. Hopefully this will help you visual learners out there.
Anyways guys, that's the end of this video, I hope you found it very helpful, and if you'd like to join a Discord server and talk with me directly, this is the easiest way to talk to me, then feel free to join, the link is down in the description below. Anyways guys, my name's Shanka Muffin, I'm signing out, please enjoy this outro.